Sir Sean. Sir. Mr. Sean. Um, Mr. Yumi, why, 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 <clears throat> why shorting after me? Ramira, clap what you did in my class. Why shorting after me, Mr. Naomi? Sir, good morning. How are you? How are you? Uh, one moment. Um, I am. Um, I don't need someone speaking terms with you. <laughs> Why, sir? Mm -hmm. Sorry, may you talk off the ear, man. Good morning, Ramon Clark. Sir, I know why. Two minutes pass at this. I'm not saying anything. Ramon Clark. Good morning, sir. I, I don't understand. They come to the high class. Now, nah, open me more time and say good morning. I don't understand you. Sir, I was switching over to my laptop. My apologies. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> How is your three going? Sir, I'm not in your three. I'm in your four. What do you mean? Talk up. Talk up. Talk truth. Yeah, that's good. Congrats. So, this is the only one you have left? Um. Well, yes. All right. Make sure for oh, Rockstone. There may be a little problem, but anyhow, um, let us see what will happen. All right. Um, I'll give the rest a little time to come in. Um, okay, no problem. Um, I may not even stay long with you guys. By the way, where were you guys last week? Good morning, sir. Sir, I was not um, aware of the class last week. Monique, you know, because yes, of sir. that, because of that, you have to buy me curried lobster. <laughs> sir, you just ain't why your lobster you want. <laughs> you see, you have to think, hey, make sure until it's a moment to flash out. So we may get the flash out. <laughs> We may ask the curry lobster and we may get swims. Okay. <laughs> that, is, that, make, that makes sense, sir. <laughs> so, you know what time I call you, you don't answer your phone. Same I here, sir. Who called me? Who was saying same here? Monique. Monique, you called me too? Yes, sir. I call you a lot of time. Um, back over in December, I was on campus more than one day. I call, I call, I call, no answer. Um, I can't, then we can't go back so far as December, but I can talk about recently. Recently, I wasn't so wellish. Oh, okay. sir, so you see me, I call you. I, saw, I, 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 I would have seen the missed call thereafter, but you see, all right, let me tell you what is happening now. So, um, because of the, after the exam, let us start from after the exam, after the exam and this marking of the papers and everything, and no, as it is, no, 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 as I speak. What has been consuming my time are the prerequisite overrides. And I don't understand why honor students, honor students, when you're when you're requesting an override, on have to do it hundred times. Why? Only send it in one time, make it stay until it's done. So one student, I have to clear all those overrides, or else if you select foundation concept two for argument's sake, I select it 20 times. If I only clear one, you're still not going to get the override. I have to go clear all 20. And um, which, is, which reminds me, I need to speak to ICT about it because it is it is time consuming. So it it has been a, a really busy period. That's the just the honest truth. A busy period. And what I what I found myself, I was going on like my my system uses a battery, and when my system kind of say time out, I really had to take a time out. So I really hope you understand. So. Those missed calls would have been when my system says to me, when I wasn't feeling well, and it says, you know, take a break. Sir, so do, we, sir, sir do we, sir, do we owe me cost? The answer me done with you. I mean, I'll call you back. We are idiot. That's <laughs> all I'm making for you. <laughs> you're a clown. You must go join the circus because you're a fool. Me know where, me know where you live, I'm know where you work, I'm know where school you go. Oh, uh, yeah, me know, yeah. sir. I want to, sir. Something wrong with me, I think, sir. So I must stress out to make them people they say me answer. No, I no. will ask two manicure attack. I will depend on campus. We are calling you. No answer. The day of the exam, I know I got a call from a few students. I think Sanya called me the day after the, after the, the day of the exam and got me. I was coming on campus, but I came on campus 
after the, I think the exam was in the morning and I came on the campus. To collect the, the papers, yes. Right. Remember I everything. Right, because I collected the papers same day, mark of the papers, and then I don't even want to reach the mark paper part. And then uh, maybe that part, maybe that too kind of send me into a state of depression. So um, we will talk about that when more people join. But um, yeah, man. So what has happened is um, because all of my classes are online and there are so many other variables that I have to deal with, like these meetings and et cetera, et cetera. Let me see, let me find a day. Okay, so like on a Monday, um, if I'm going on campus, it will have to be early enough because I cannot, if I leave campus at 3.30 to get home for a five o'clock class, it's not gonna work because the traffic starts building from about 3.30. So anytime after that, you won't see me on campus because I, I have all evening classes. So when I come on campus, like I was there yesterday, to deal with a matter, I came in at about 11 o'clock-ish, and then by two o'clock I was out. So if, 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 if needs be, you know, send me, a, send me a few messages. But anyhow, we have seven of you here so far. Um, my blood is boiling. Yes, sir, I know it's a boil. Cost me, yes, cost me, cost me. Cost, 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 and I have to do it now. Because no. church is tomorrow, I'm gonna need to pray for forgiveness. Yes, sir. So I've spoken to Naomi before. Um, but the rest of you, what happened? I got a telephone call. I got several calls the day after the exam to say, boy, sir, the revision class he did with us last night was very useful because um the areas that you went through the revision came back not the questions you know but the areas came back and you know sir i feel confident and whatever else and support and so on i saw in the whatsapp group if um anybody see the grades them yet no and i decided that i wasn't going to respond because the grades are on arian already long time but i don't publish the grades yet because they're atrocious i felt like i wasted a whole semester coming to class. I felt like I didn't teach a thing. I felt, I just feel bad as a teacher. I feel bad, bad, bad as a teacher. I mean, I have, I have, I have marked scripts this time around where students are getting zeros for questions. I mean, not just one question. For all of the questions, students are getting zero. I couldn't even find one mark. I feel bad. I not lie to you. I feel really, really, really bad. And I mean, these are students who, some of you guys who participate in my class, some of you guys who I expected better from. No, ma'am, I feel really, 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 really bad about it. And to the point, it may can be honest, I don't know, to the point where I, I went in and I told them that, please to take me off the Saturday morning classes because I didn't want to teach foundation concept too. I felt real bad. I felt like I, I cheated you guys. I felt like I came to class every Saturday morning and I never taught a thing. And if you guys never understand what I was teaching, I felt like, you know, no, I, I just, Never have I, let me say, since it's long time of teaching, so let me say, never have I in a long time, if ever, that I would have felt this way. And particularly, there are students in a class who I expected much better from. To the point where, exactly. even before, I even, not well, as a head of the department, I took a decision that I'm going to give over a mid-semester exam. So even one or two more people could have passed the course. It helped one or two more people, you know. But we can't, we can't go along, someone. 
we cannot go along so we we come a class and we sit down and, and as of the head of the software only never they are complete and you know no, I mean, students to be honest with you i am i am not in a good state um there are students here that have taught quite a while ask, ask any of my students i come to my class with a serious passion a passion where I want my students them to learn and to do very well. And when you come and come give me them something there, when I can't do them things, I tell them, man, I, I, I don't, as I said before, I didn't want to go on to um to Foundation Concept 2. 279458. Hold on a minute, please. 279458. <clears throat> Yeah, as I said before, I, I, morning Dixon, morning Zanika. As I said before, I, me just feel, me feel bad. Now, fortunately for you, fortunately, there is no prerequisite for Foundation Concept 2. Or else, many of you could not have been in this class. All right? Many of you could not have been in this class. Now, let me just put my claim out there from now. And for those students who were not in my class, my Foundation Concept class last year, last semester, what I'm talking about last year. Last year. Sir, I want to ask you a question. Go ahead. All right, so I didn't get to do the final exam because of health issues. Um, mm -hmm. Does that mean, I know I have to do a reset, but I don't know mm -hmm. if it's the whole course or just the final exam. All right, so I recognize that you didn't do it, Zanika, and, not, it's, and it's, just not, it's not you alone. Um, one of the things that I couldn't um, decipher is like I went on campus one day, one other day this week, other than yesterday. And um, somebody said to me that there is a recent paper. And I said, no, that is not a recent student. That student was in my class. So apparently some students did an exam and their scripts went into another package because when I completed my marking, I couldn't account for a few students. You were one of them. Um, what will happen, Zanika, is I will look at your, your, your coursework grade. If you have a passing grade for your coursework, then you can be qualified for a missed exam, where it is that you just do the exam over in the next sitting when the course is being offered. All right. Um, but as I said, fortunately, you you there is no prerequisite for foundation concept two. Had there been a prerequisite for foundation concept two, you could not have been doing this course. Okay, sir, so I understand. Mm -hmm. Hey man, but um, what real talk though, and um, <laughs> every every Saturday morning, I would remind students, complete your edicus off, complete your edicus off. And I remember I was in an exit meeting on Tuesday of this week, and the vice principal asked me, Mr. Shand, what information can you give us about the passes in math? And I spoke. And then I just had to be real. I had to be real and say, you know, when the students feel, you know, everybody's pointing fingers to the teacher, you know, that's how unfair this is. When the students fail, everybody's saying that the teacher did not teach. Well, me now take the blame there. Me sorry, me not take the blame there. Nope. I continue to sleep very well after marking those exam papers, but I'm still disappointed. I'm still disappointed. Um, there are students in the class who pass, you know. There are students in the class who pass. Not many, 
but there are students in the class who pass. And I'm saying to myself, if those few students in the class could pass, what about the rest of the class? What about the rest of the class? If those few students could pass, what about the rest of Uno? So I, I told her, every day I come to class, I say, complete the edit of complete the edit of all when the semester done. Some students still never start them edit of And some student right in office says, sir, can I get an extension? Oh, sir, I had issues, but you've never told me I had issues before. That is true, sir. No, man. It can't work. Students, to be honest with you, <laughs> I spoke to my assistant and I said to my assistant, I do not want to teach this class because these students are not ready. And I'm going to use a word that she used to me, not she, another member of staff, the other foundation concept two teachers, as a matter of fact, um, because she has the same problem with her foundation concept one. She said to me, Mr. Shand, these students are not hungry. And I said, that's a good word to use. Only not hungry for the education. Only want it, you know, but only not hungry. You know, sometimes when you get a plate of food, only no not have to eat, but the food not nice, you know, right? Um, only may want a little calamari and, and zucchini and broccoli with cauliflower and, you know, lemon meringue pie. That's what you know want. But really and truly, on a pocket can only afford a turkey neck. And on a having a turkey neck, well cooked and well seasoned and well tasted nice. But on a on a eat it because on have to eat. But what you know really want is something else. This is how on a treat in school. On a no one want a little qualification. But on a no hungry feet. On a no hungry feet at all. I want a hunger. I want a hunger. I want when I don't have to come to class and talk about it because of. I don't have to come to class and say, open oh, your mouth and talk. I don't want to come to class and say, where is Mary and Jane and John and Joe? One must have a hunger for this, man. One must have a hunger for this. Because I'm telling you, had this been any other institution, dog, nyam on a supper. Dog, nyam on a supper. So students, I tell you, I love you still, you know. I don't lie on you, man. I rate you the same way, you know. But I'm vexed. I'm vexed, bad. Um, however, let me hasten to say that um, just as though I have done so many things wrong and I go to God and ask him for forgiveness. And I said, boy, God, you're the plan. I'm not going to do it again. I'm going to do it again for about one week or one month or two months. And then I find myself doing the same something. It could be I'm not supposed to eat chocolate. Um, I've been having some terrible headaches as of late. And this morning, I said to myself, no, I don't want them kind of food. I mean, I bought dinner last night and good, good dinner too. And I just never fell for it. You know me eat? one crackers and, and some tea and drink the soup. Just never feed for the food. And this morning, with a splitting headache, I know I'm not supposed to get up and have cheese. And I say, all right. I go sit down and wait for them, you know. I'm going to make my tea and have biscuit and cheese to eat here. Mark, you have headache. I'm not supposed to have the cheese. But I still eat the cheese. So these are the sort of disobedience. And then now when my head continues to hurt me, I say, oh, goodness, Lord, I shouldn't have had the cheese. Forgive me. So I say this to say to you, I, I will at times me do things wrong. I'm, I forgot to God and ask him for forgiveness. I really hope that you guys are, have sought forgiveness from the Lord for not focusing on, on your schoolwork the way you're supposed to, and that you're going to make a concerted effort for this semester. The only way I can truly forgive you guys is unless all of you pull up your drawers and pass the foundation concept too. That's the only way I can forgive you guys. But no man, my students, I'm not pleased. I couldn't tell when last, if ever my teacher class, where a handful of students pass, literally a 
handful of students pass. Me I teach course and everybody I pass my math my math class them. And if anybody I feel as six students, I feel or five students I feel. Me can't teach one class and 80% of the class I feel. No man, that no, that that they can't write. That not put nothing to my image, man. Anyhow, I think I have said enough. Me want to hear from Unino. So I've heard from Zenika. Um I heard from Naomi um, previously. I want to hear from the rest of you. Whether or not you did the foundation concept one with me. You may have done it with somebody else. But I want to hear from you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh, so I'm gonna start again. May I talk to them and answer me? On the start? Already? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that you see that? Sir, good morning again. Good morning, Naomi. How are you today? I'm kind of fine, but we're giving thanks to you. Nice. That's the spirit. So you know this semester are different, you know. We are gonna we are gonna make you feel proud. Don't worry. <laughs> I really hope so, Naomi. I, I, I am praying. I'm praying. You know, part of the other reason, again, for me, um, why I feel this way. Times are really too hard for you to go pay money for one course. Yeah, and then you have to pay money again for go resit it. It's it not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy, man. So we don't have time for giving money them ways there. You know, you, you, let us just do it one shot and just get it out of, out of the way, you no know, man. Just get it out of the way, man. You know, you know, you know, I appreciate them too. But anyhow, I need to hear from the rest of you. I hear from Naomi, I hear from Zinika, I need to hear from the rest of you. Good morning again, sir. Thank um, you. Well, well. So, sir, um, I did message you after the exam and, tell you, and told you how I feel about the exam, so, sir. Um, For this concept, so, sir, I'm just trying my best to buckle up and get everything right because you did all the right things. So, you, um, yeah, um, true. Yes, yeah, so you have to forget that, sir. I did miss, um, I did tell him the message that if, um, if I did not pass, the onus would be on me. But you did do what you have to do because, um, you're juggle, sir. You talk to us every week. You tell us to do our educational stuff and all those stuff, so, sir. I wouldn't put a blame on you. You did well. And I thank you. And even though you said you went to school and uh, you said you didn't want to do the concept too, but you are still here with us, sir. So I guess, you know, you, st you, st you see something in us and you want it to come out. So we just have to give you what we have to give you and we have to buckle down and do what we have to do. That's uh, from you, sir. Thank you, Monique. Um, And I did see that message and, um, and, um, and, I, and, and I appreciate your kind words. Yeah, but you know, um, one of the things that I want you guys to do is if you're having difficulties, don't wait until the post gone through the gate and you can't find the post to say something. If you have a difficulty from day one, talk it up. Talk it up. Um, and I mean, and, and I mean, the difficulty may be, it could be, you know, have nothing to eat and you're not going to be able to learn it in other class. You know, why if you come to me and say, sir, you know, I don't have anything to eat. But 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 say something to me. Say, boy, sir, hear the plan. I'm going through a difficult time right about now. Let me tell you, sir, hear the plan. I won't call upon you to talk. Just do what you need to do and just listen into the class. But, I mean, you have to meet me halfway. You have to meet me. Um, You know... You have to meet. You have. You have to meet me. Uh, if you if you meet me halfway, my guarantee you say we pass the course. As I said before, there's no love lost, you know. But we just want in the first. We want in the first. Um, if you if you know if you notice. Um. <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Next time. Um, 
And I and, and to be honest with you, you, you send this to everybody. So let me just respond to this. Um, I saw the efforts on, on your exam paper when I marked it. When I marked your exam paper, I saw the effort. I saw where it is that you fought. And if my memory serves me right, if my memory serves me right, um, and I really hope I'm not speaking out of turn. Um, I remember shouting when I marked your simultaneous equation and I said, thank you, Jesus. There is at least one student in the class who remember how to do this stuff. I did this with them yesterday, last night, right? So I saw your efforts, Dexter, and I thank you for it. I saw your effort. I saw where it is that you, 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 despite the confidence moving out of the bag, um, you held on to what was left and you, and you persevered. Um, so I was saying to you know, students that you know, there are students that I have. Um, yesterday I got a call. Well, before yesterday, I had. Hmm, what was it? I had a striping ceremony for my nurses on Tuesday. And I went on campus for the function. And um and I saw some, I saw one student, year one, year two. She's either in year two, year two or year three of the nursing program. And she came through my hands. And I was like, wow, this is very nice. And I saw a student, a past student of mine, who is now working at the institution, who is graduating next week, Thursday, who I taught a very difficult math course to. And the student called me yesterday and I was having a conversation with the student and I said, hey, by the way, your graduation was last year because I just couldn't remember when I taught the student. She said, no, sir, I'm graduating next year. And then she told me the the other students in the class were graduating. I said, wow, very, very, very good. And I reflected on a few students in the class that had taught the course and some of those students didn't pass. And I said to them, I am doing a fast track class in the summer, you know? And the students said to me, sir, we're going away. I said, I don't care. The class is going to be online and we must do the course and do very well. And when the student said to me, yes, sir, all of us made a graduation list, I felt really good. You know why? I have started a process and I would have seen the students go through to the end of the process. And that is my, that is my aim, that is my concern. My concern, I mean, after I'm finished, you know, when you can't see me, I wrote and pass me, I'm going to go, don't know me, you know, it don't mean a thing to me. It don't mean one earthly thing to me. Mark you, when you know walk past me, I take a two before I slap it on the knee, right? But if you know one call to me for no business, all I want to know is that only they finish the course, only they finish the program, and you guys are a little bit more qualified than you are than when, than, 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 than when it came to us. That is my aim. Maybe I'm asking too much, but I think this is my purpose here in the classroom. Um, I never, I didn't, I didn't call myself to teaching. Teaching called me, and my friends keep cussing me out and said to me, "Say I'm a fool, fool, because I could have make three times as much." And when I see them flourishing, they say, "No, all of those things are not all necessary." You know, I mean, when I can help one or two students, so forth and so on. How many people you help? And them can't answer me. Say, oh, yeah, there are only for students I help, man. And, you know, make them realize them dreams. I believe this is what God has called me to do. And sometimes I, 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 I do, well, most times I do. And do, and do, to the point where I can't do no more. And um, your, your mommy and your daddy and your granny will say to you, say, you can't carry um, donkey for water, but you can't force donkey for drink it. I'm not calling any of your donkeys, please. Don't want to tell your husbands and wives and children that a teacher call a donkey. But if you understand what I'm saying, but I'm going to be encouraging you to drink this water. I'm going to encourage you to 
to hunger and thirst for the foundation concept too. And and um and just pass it and just don't have to see my face again. All right. Um all right, so I sent a message this morning to Edico because um okay, so she she read the message and I'm happy about that. Because in all of this, I know I Edikosoff was closed on the 31st of December. Then Edikosoff opened again in January. And then Edikosoff opened again in January. And then we had to reopen Edikosoff because there are still students that have not completed the stuff. So I know I have been bothering them. And in my headspace, I had asked I had asked for access to semester two. And the spirit of the Lord said to me last night, go and set up the class. And I said, sure, no man, teacher kind of tired. So I was sitting, I was actually relaxing, we were trying to relax. So Naomi, I saw that missed call last night, but my phone was dead and was on charge. I mean, I recognized it, I, I just couldn't, um, it was too late. Um, so I sent her a message this morning and told her that I totally forgot to request access for the new semester. So fortunately she has, she has read the message. Um, India is a couple hours away from us, but I'm hoping before class ends today, I will get the, the access to give you all access to the platform. Nonetheless, um, we're going to be moving on. Um, I'm seeing nine of us here. Not sure if this is going to be the class. Um, I think I should do this. Those of you who are here for the first time, I think you should introduce yourself. You can't just go to the eye class and just go like you, you want to sneak in and don't say nothing. I say one, two, three, four, uno. Me know two uno out of the four, but the rest of not know them. So come, start talk up. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Abby. Um, so I'm Abigail Bernard. Uh, I'm a second year student in geriatric nursing. Um, nice. And yeah, I I, I I'm not a re really a math person. Mm -hmm. But so hope we can, you know, match up something that time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, nice to meet you guys. Um, yes. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Abigail, tell your folks that you like long time here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, so you never know. Mm -hmm. so, the teachers so, so 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 load up, load up here. But anyhow, welcome, Abby. Um, I'm going to challenge you though, Abby, that when you complete this geriatric care um, studies, you need to apply for the full nurse in here. Oh, wow. Um, mm, okay. What was that? Um, okay, sir. Okay. Come on, think about it, man. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. All right. Congrats. Welcome. Welcome. Who is next? Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Romario Tarek. I am a fourth year student in tourism. Um, what else? I'm here because Mrs. Mr. Shan is literally the only teacher that can actually teach my math. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm waiting until fourth year for CMN and come back up for foundation too. So I'm just here to finish my degree and get over with school. I have like two, well, this is my second semester. So I have one semester left after this. And I'm to finish. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Papa. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Who is next? If you're here for the first time, can you just introduce yourself to me, please? I don't need to call you out. 
you know yourselves. Okay, Carlo, can you unmute for me, please? Hi, everyone. Good morning. Are you hearing me? Loud and clear. I, I'm logging a bit late. So I'm not sure what you're exactly you're asking of me. Just, just introduce yourself. Okay. I am a second year social work student. Okay. All right, do me a favor, Carla. I'm going to ask to, for you to put your, your last name on the Zoom platform, please. It is used for um, attendance purposes. So just go and rename and put your last name, please. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Um, Good morning, Sarah. Sarah. Good morning, Chantal. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm currently at work right now. Uh, no problem. So I might not be responding as much. Okay, I'm not. Maybe log out. I have to change it. No, you don't have to log out. You don't have to log out. What's your last name, um, Carlo? Buckle. Sorry, I thought I was muted. B A. Buckle. B U C K L E. Oh, Buckle. I'm sorry. I thought it said Buckle. No why? B U C K L E. No, I, I thought you said Bacchus. It was Buckle. B U C K L E. That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, yes, Chantal. Never mind. We 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 understand. Um, money offer make for pay school fees, so I will facilitate you in that regard. Tristan, can you go for me, please? Morning, sir. Morning. Uh, my name is um, Tristan Campbell. I'm currently an ABIT second year student. Okay. Right. So, um, I All right, somebody has just joined. Um, okay. All right, <clears throat> calling it. Morning, sir. Morning, dears. Introduce yourself to your classmates. My name is Colleen Clark. So you know that um, sometimes I will be at work, but my overtime don't start until next week, I think. Mm -hmm. So this week I'm at home. So next week right. I'll be at work. Right. Not a problem. Colleen, um, not calling it. You are calling it. Chantal and Zanika also has um, also have a challenge because they have to work. Um, so you'll be facilitated. You know, you know, just Chantal came on and said, sir, I'm at work. I may not be able to respond much. Yeah, so that's what I want. When you come on and you're at work, let me know um, so that I don't expect you to be. But I mean, at least I'm not going to let's say most rob the people in them time because that's not Christian life. But if you can just put in an earpiece um, and just listening to what is happening so that when you're watching the videos, at least what it is that you're hearing or seeing at that time will not be all strange because you would have heard what it is that I was saying. So it's important for you to follow through. Oh, and that's another thing. Um, there is an ex We can add, send a link into the chat, not me. I will send a link into the chat for you to join via the link. <clears throat> and um, 
and my recordings are posted to my YouTube channel. And um, I'll ask that you subscribe so that whenever I post something there, you will see it. I teach two other courses this semester. And, um, but when, I, when I'm posting to my YouTube channel, I'll post course code and course name. So if, for example, you see Math 4702, Calculus 2, you know that's not yours. But once you see Math 0002, Foundation Concept 2, you know that one is yours. You watch the, the videos. You can pause it. If you have to pause it, you can come back to it. If like, oh, when I post this recording now, you'll hear all talky talk, you know, just getting some housekeeping out of the way, which is very, very, very important. What you do when you're listening to the recording, you can fast forward until the point where it is a class session where you do this stuff. Because what I won't do is purge the recording because I would want students who who would not, um, who were not present in class to still have access and, and listen to what is happening. So I don't necessarily need to do my cuss out again because the recording is there, you know, with me expressing my disappointment in the performance of the students. So it is up to you to go and listen to, to know and to make a commitment that you're going to be doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. All right. Um, <clears throat> just want to get the, 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 the other housekeeping out of the way. So yes, there is going to be, um, there is going to be F5. There is going to be um, the use of Educasoft for this semester. Um, that is mandated. I'm just checking Edico to see if the things are updated. It's not yet updated, but it's not a problem. I still have access to Foundation Concept 2 from last semester. So I will use the foundation concept to, to, to demonstrate what it is that I need to do. Um, <clears throat> so we go from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock. And one of the things that I thought about for this semester, because I'm not into the foolishness, which you know, really and truly. So if it means that I have to force you to do something, I'm going to force you to do something. And I want you to understand this from day one. And for those of you who um, were not with me last year and last semester, sorry. And this may not apply to you. <clears throat> it's going to be applicable to the whole class. Just like all the rainfall and the just and the unjust alike. Yeah. This is my, this is my suggestion. Because you guys have other competing courses and you can't do what it is that is required of you and la di da la di di and you can't get to complete your EDUCASOF. I mean, you don't complete your EDUCASOF. It means that you don't have the additional knowledge in your headspace to pass the exam. Um, I am going to give you, I'm going to be teaching for about two and a half to three hours on a Saturday morning. And whilst you guys are still in class, you are going to complete the EDUCASOF pieces for that Saturday in class. If you don't complete it in class, it must be started in class. If you don't complete it, I'll give you a couple of hours after class to complete it. And then I'm going to close out those assessments. I'm very sorry, but I have to do it. So. Gone are the, 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 the days when I will just have everything open up and, um, and then come to class every day to encourage you to, to complete your EDUCASOFT pieces and so forth. I'm not going to be in that. It didn't work last semester. And uh, my constant reminders, um, you know, didn't, did not have any footing to stand on. So starting today, 
I will assign you some pieces for you to work on. So about an hour and a half to an hour and an hour to an hour and a half um, to the close of class. I will just give you some pieces to work on. Just give you some pieces to work on. Um, I will still be here in class, but I won't be teaching. You are going to be working and working and working. You have an issue, you can ask me to explain, to clarify, but you're going to be sitting in class to do some work. Um, I have to do all that I need to do in order to get to maximize um, out of you. All right. So just to let you know, um, that's what is going to be happening. Are there any other questions before we begin? Any? Um, Sir. Yes, you know me. So remember, I'm so off with the leave because I have an appointment. Yeah, man, that's fine. That's fine. Just let me know when you're stepping out. That's fine. Sir, but I still, when I, when I walk, when I, I can still hear, you know, sir, but when I reach out, I have to go turn off the, the, the glass. Yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine. All right. All right. Okay, no problem. All right, Um. so let me just, based on what I'm seeing in the, a direct message, I didn't get to do foundation one. Um. So there are some, the person who sent this to me, there are two of my students who I'm not seeing scripts for one of the students said to me that um just knowing class that you know for whatever reason didn't get to do the exam fortunately there is no prerequisite for foundation concept two so whether or not you did foundation concept one you can move on to foundation concept two um even though some of the concepts from foundation concept one will be needed for foundation concept two. But um, yeah, you, you should be fine. I've had students who started foundation two, then moved to three and then got to one and um, would have done very well. So you are okay. All righty. Um, let me um, go ahead, Carla. Um, I said, I'm um, you're gonna give us the work on it for staff and then close it a few hours after, right? We're finish it, um, during the class hours, right? You extend it until the end of the day, like midnight, because I have to go to work immediately after I finish my class. Mm, that's fine, no, man, that's right. fine. Okay, thanks, yeah, no problem. My only issue, Carla, you weren't with us last semester, but my only issue there is, is that um, I used to keep the platform open weeks on end and students are still not completing the, the work. So, you know, I'm forcing you guys to do it. So sure, I can give you up until the end of the Saturday to complete it. Not a problem by me. All right, so let us see how we can... All right. Um, are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, as I did with the other class, I'm going to do it, do it, do with you. I recognize that whenever I and I don't even know if I want to, to meddle with it, but I recognize that every time I I share my screen, my microphone is muted. Uh, maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing, I don't know. So if when I share my screen and you're not hearing from me, you say I'm moving the screen up and down, you can just say to me, um, you know, 
sir will not hear in or whatever it is, or sir, you're muted, or you will see that I'm muted. Um, so I'm just going to ask you to help me out in that regard. I don't know why, um, but it just happens. It may be a good thing or it may be a bad thing, but um, just to let you know. Yes, yes, it is. The course is strictly online um, and your exam is going to be face to face. So um, let us let us see how best we can navigate those. Um, and, and thanks for Mario for asking me that question. And of course, this is not for my working students, but one of the things that I, I was mentioned in an executive meeting recently um, by some other exec members is that they recognize that some students are, they have logged into the class, but them log in to say that they are there, but they are really not there. Um, them gone out to do, gone wash, them gone cook, them gone clean. Um, maybe they are at work, whatever the situation is. So there are times that I'm asking, is everybody understanding? Can you unmute? Maybe it's me just raising my blood pressure because the students are really not there. And um, this wasn't an observation made by me. It was an observation made by another lecturer and supported by other lecturers. So it suggests to me that I'm not the only one facing that variable. So I'm gonna say to you, just like all those three students say, sir, I'm at work. I understand the roots, you know. I come and count them and say, I'm not supposed to work. But just to clear it up front. So when I'm asking the question um, and I don't hear Colin it responding or Chantal responding or Zenika responding, I can know so boy, them at work. But the rest of you, I want you to be engaged. I want you to ask me those questions. I want you to, I want us for, for us to have communication because you know that's a two way flow. And um, as I keep saying, we can lay down in my bed and talk about um, and talk about hold on oh boy I tell you I love that lady clearly she has given me access to No, where am I doing there? Are you still seeing my screen? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, I don't know where, why it is that I, I don't know how it is that I got there or why it is that I got there. All right, so I don't have access to it just yet. Um, Let me see. No, I don't have access to it yet. No, that's last term. All right, so. um. Okay, maybe my hand touched something. So when you when you when you when you look at the screen, you will see units one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then flash exam questions. I can lay down in my bed and talk about the introduction to functions and relations and geometry and measurement and trigonometry and them wonderful something they come and know them. But don't want to come to class and talk to myself. I want them to talk to me. All right? Me a big one, please. I don't want to I struggle last semester. You know, none of them drama there, y'all. I want some good things. All right, I'm ready. Um, I need somebody to share something that is positive because I believe everything that I spoke about just now is positive too, yeah, but it's kind of on the downside of the positive. Somebody share something nice to me, please, to the class so we can, um, so we can, we can move on. We can fast. Any joys? All right, so you guys are not hearing me, so let me just call upon someone in the class since I'm not being heard. Um, Dexton, share something nice with teacher and your classmates. Okay, let me check on this. Um, if ever you come across a situation where you feel as if um, it might get the best of you, just know that that thought is only in your head and you are bigger than that situation. And God is also bigger than that situation and bigger than me. So carry your problems to God and he will work it out for you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Me seal that enough, enough times. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, thank you very much. Sir, yes, sir, can, can I just add something to sure. what Dixon just said? Because um, I was in a situation yesterday, and I'm telling you, as Dixon said, you just, um, you just need to be the bigger person and you know you don't have to react to every everything that is negative because if you do react to some negative thing it can go worse than how you want it to go so i'm telling you i was in a really bad situation yesterday and i was so calm i was so calm i was so calm i was so calm mm -hmm. and then it worked out that me and that person had a talk had a one-on-one -on -one sit down and talk and i was saying if i was to react to how you yes please, i'm coming how you were um reacting it would have been worse we could have get into an eat um and physical altercation with you know things could mm -hmm. have happened so i'm saying you know we can just um just not react to everything negative mm -hmm. and that's that's so true that's so true it um scripture says a soft answer turn it away wrath but harsh words stir up anger and when you walk away, you are not the smaller person. You are actually the bigger person. And um, some people decide to them not take last lick. I have taken many last lick. And you know, so me used to go a little bit and I'm, I'm going to my friend them yard and I'm family yard and they little bit them come out and give me last lick. Me used to cry, coming up with one the last lick. But no, I recognize it's a good thing because you don't you, you, you don't react. You're the bigger person because you know when I cost life, no cost nothing. And um, you're just a bigger person when you, you just, you know, you just pray for them. People say some very mean things about me and I say, okay, fine. All right, no problem. And sometimes when those mean things hurt, I may say, um, I want you to think about something. The very same thought that you have of me, others may have even worse a thought about you so be careful of the poisonous words that you speak to others all right so don't worry about it um as as dexter says god, god is in control always in control and um once we commit our lives to him him, him, him will just take charge full charge all right sir. yes mommy sir. you're running out now you're running out now no sir okay. tell you, that's what me want to say to you go ahead Sir, the other day we have a new supervisor, you know. And mm -hmm. she come and she disrespect the whole of we now we answer the Larry Crow. Mm -hmm. And sir, I couldn't eat when I come home. And when I have beard, I have cuss. Mm -hmm. And I cuss and I cuss and I say, you know, sir, I'm not going to make that woman make me lose my job. She disrespect me, you know, sir, very bad, you know. Very, mm -hmm. very, very out of place. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the bathroom. I like someone to pray to me, say, write Miss Alagi now, write him a letter pertaining to how oh, she, how oh, she, how oh, she, how oh, she, she come at us. Mm -hmm. And sir, I'm write the letter and give him, and he call me when me did sick, and me did the past sick leave, and he did and he said, now me that letter that you wrote me, get up all the, the persons, and we'll have a meeting with the supervisor. Mm -hmm. Sir, you said going to the meet now, we had, and me tell her, I'm she said she never know say what she be say make me feel so. Mm -hmm. Sir, she disrespect me real bad. You know, real, me mm -hmm. I tell her real bad. Yeah, That's only thing if you do for just get straight right now, face and you go your yard. You tell yeah. you how you feel. Right. But and but we Sir, we, we, I went we, to in at the meeting, she said she mm -hmm. apologized to everyone. I saw we I saw we get to calm down because we we saw we are gonna strike with our work. Right. She disrespect me. I said, we are saying that we have clean shit and them so they make this over there come and deal with you, sir. And yeah, I'm a country but... girl too, you know, sir. I'm a country girl, <laughs> yeah. you know. No, but guess what? No, you remember, sir, she apologized, you know, so we're not going to speak in that tone because we forgive her. Yes, but it, sir, but yes. It, but but sometimes, them, 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 sometimes, maybe, sir, we're there on our back of field when we're there. Right? So if we don't stand up strong and say, God, do one, two, three, four, five, seven, and ten. No, something about count to hundred. But your your point is well taken. Um and I and I endorse it one hundred and ten percent. You're correct. So you know, just make sure you say we do what we're supposed to do. And once we do what we're supposed to do, we're good to go. I just changed, I just changed my tab a while ago. 
I'm not sure if you're seeing it. Can you see the blue tab that says the definition of a relation? No, sir, I'm still seeing the um, okay. ethical self units. All right, right. So I, do, I need to do a new share. All right, thanks, Romario. And that's one of the other things again, guys. You have to talk to me so that I can know that you are, I can be able to differentiate your voice. Um, so I need to do a new tab. Rockstone. Well, I don't know, because. Okay. Oh, it went down here. Okay. You seen it now? Yes, sir. Oh. All right, cool. So I was talking to you, but because I did a new share, I was muted. So when I have to be alert enough to help me out, you know, because I don't understand this. Um, this thing. Anyway, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We, we have serious business to, to work through. Um. Oh, man, Lord. Oh, gosh. Um. Are you still seeing this, the top students because it disappeared for me? Are you still seeing it? I'm seeing the relations on the fingers to a relation, but I'm not seeing any definition. Yeah, but I mean, I thanks, Romario. Okay, all right, fine. Why this this business is all over the place? All right, I found it back. All right, so any set of ordered pairs. Is called a relation. Ordered pairs. We mean by ordered pairs, sir. An ordered pair is two things separated by a comma, like a comma b, contained in parentheses, and that to be like their x and y coordinates. So any set of ordered pairs is called a relation. Any set of ordered pairs it must be ordered is called a relation. The set of all first coordinates in the ordered pair in the ordered pairs of a relation is called the domain. Right? So the first one in the ordered pair is called the domain, which is my x value and my y value is going to be called a range. Right? And the second set of all the um the set of all the second coordinates is called a range. All right? So um, the ordered pair, hold on one minute, please. So the set of ordered pairs is called a relation. It's called a relation. Set of ordered pairs is called a relation. Um, how do I explain this? So think of a relation, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, baby mother, baby father. That's a relation. Now, man and woman 
is contained in that union, that household. The first, maybe the domain, it's not maybe, is the domain, but maybe the first is going to be the male. Yes, sir, you're sexist, no? Because the male may be the main provider for the household. And then now the female is going to be the range. And in some households, the female will be the domain and the male will be the range. So the roles flip because, you know, in some relationships, you know, I can tell you, I know, of, I know of a few. You may have one being a medical doctor and the other one is a mechanic. And even though sometimes the mechanic carry more money than a medical doctor, but you know, it's not that you have a medical doctor and a medical doctor or two teachers or two bankers, you know, or two, um, whatever it is, lawyers. You may have a lawyer and, uh, and somebody is a carpenter um, or you may have a teacher and somebody who is a cook. And during COVID, the cook na na make no money because of COVID and nobody na go eat out. So you know, say the COVID money na come in, but the teacher them still get paid. So maybe the man who is the chef, right? Um, business is on a slow, but the wife, the is a teacher and she now have got stand most of the bills because you know things on a on a on a, on a go slow for him and it may be the other way around it may be the male that is a teacher and the female who is a cook and the man of the say all right you depend but baby no worry about nothing yeah everything is all right me, me take care of that until things start pick up all right so that's what the relation is two things in in a union working together the first one is going to be the domain the second one is going to be the range let me stop you and ask you do you understand what i just explained go again sir so i'm saying to you in the in 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 this in this union in this union you have husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend, whoever it is. Both of them, both of them are working for the same common good to help each other, right? Both of them are working for the same common good to help each other. Now, it may mean, Romario, that as a fourth year tourism student, your, your option may be food and beverage and your partner may be a cosmetologist. The cosmetologists in this season really wasn't making a lot of money because it was on a go slow, all right? Now, you know who work into the 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 um the hotel maybe the one getting the consistent money and then you may say no sir because the hotel people they may not get no money okay fine then the roles will switch then your partner now maybe the one bringing in the money and you're on a go slow the first coordinate in the ordered pair of the relation is called the domain the second coordinate is called a range. It's called a range. So one is a domain and one is a range. I will say to you that one will be the independent variable and one will be the dependent variable. I won't tell you which one just yet. I'll take it in stages. So one is going to be the independent variable. One is going to be the dependent variable. What do you mean by independent and dependent, sir? You have a child. Your child depends on you. So 
So your child is going to be the dependent variable and you are the independent variable. Independent because you can do what it is that you need to do. And I will say to you ladies, always be, be, be an independent variable in your relationship. So when the man decides that him now I care no money come give because him vexed with you, you still can go do your hair and your nails and buy your food and eat and do what you need to do. All right? So the independent variable is the one that determines what the, 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 the dependent variable, the outcome will be. All right? So if you work money, your family eat. If you don't work money, they are hungry. That's what it is. All right? So let's go. So it says, when a ball is thrown upwards with a certain velocity, velocity is just really speed. The height of the ball above the ground changes as time changes. And I want you to think about it. It says, when a ball is thrown upwards with a certain velocity. So it means, say like uh, somebody trang like um, Romario now, when him throw the ball up in the air, the ball will go way up in the air for him trang. So this is where he threw the ball. I hope you're seeing my, my cursor. Are you seeing my cursor? Yes, sir. All right, so this, is, so this is where the ball is. So he threw the ball eight feet high. So this is the height of the ball. But as the ball loses velocity, velocity is speed. As the ball loses velocity, the ball comes to this position and it loses more, it comes to this position. And it loses more, it comes to this position until it reaches ground. But guess what? When it reaches ground, you know, it now just goes stop, so don't. What's what gonna happen? Tag a bounce. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's gonna do the summer bounce a little bit, you know. Yeah, take a bounce a little bit until it bounce, 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 and it have no more bounce for me. And then it just, mm, they are wrong. This is exactly what it is. Um, and I'll show you how nicely this example of the ball comes into effect. It says then, suppose the height of the ball above ground is measured in feet. For a time, T measured in seconds. So remember, you know, the height of the ball is when we measured in feet over time that is measured in seconds then the height is going to be 100 t minus 16 t squared sir where them get that from a fidem formula now worry about it a them come up with that formula h equals 100 t minus t 16 t squared that's their formula. What it is saying is that for each value of T, we can get a value of H. So for each value of T, we can get a value of H, right? For each value of T, we can get a value of H. So where did they get H equals 100 T minus 16 T from? Don't question me, don't question it. Is their equation, but we're going to be using their equation now to understand what is happening. So I want you to look at that equation for me because it's going to bring out the domain and it's going to bring out the range. So my T is going to be my domain and my H will be the range. For each value of T, we get a value of H. Now my T is my independent variable. And my H is going to be, be the dependent variable. And why is my T, my H, the independent, is, is the dependent variable? It depends on the value of T in order to get a value of H. So if T is zero, H is zero. If T is one, it's going to be 100 times one, minus 16 times one squared. So it's going to be 100 minus 16, which is eight to four. So H went to be eight to four in that case. 
So the value of H depends on the value of T. The value of H depends on the value of T. All right? So just like what I did a while ago, let us look when H, when T is equal to two. When T is equal to two, and remember, in big school, this dot means multiplication. It's not a decimal point, it's a multiplication. The decimal point will be closer to the, um, closer down. The, the dot comes in the middle. So if T is equal to two, it's going to be 100. I'm substituting the value of T times two minus 16 times two squares. Now we know that two squares is equal to four and four times 16 is gonna be equals to a large value and two times a hundred is gonna be equals to 200. So that works out to be 136 feet. I'm gonna ask you to take a few minutes to just do that calculation and see if you get that 136 feet and let me know. I'm giving it three minutes to work on that. Three minutes and then I'll come back to you. Got it, sir.
Okay, anybody agrees? With the 136? Yes, sir. Is there anybody in the class that does not understand how they got the 136? Please, sir. Can somebody explain how they got the 136, please? Hello, can somebody explain for me, please? Um, so it is 100 times 2, give it 200. Then they're going to multiply. No, they're going to find this. So it's 2 it's raised to the power of 2. So that is 2 times 2. This is equal to 4. 4 times 16 is equal to 64. So you're going to minus to 64 from the 200. And that's going to give you the answer of 136. I don't know if you're speaking because I can't hear you. Are you right, you know? Because I'm very much, Abby, thank you very much because I'm very much talking and um, I'm muted. Thanks, Abby. So I was asking who said that they didn't understand this before? Mm. Right, it was you, Abby? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So my question to you now, dearest. Are you seeing it now? Mm. Oh, sorry. I can't. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can work it out for me. No, right, no problem. Mm. Hold on, I'm trying to. Maybe I can't use it like that. So I have to create a new one. So let me just create a new one. Right. So I have to create a new one in order to use it. No, no problem. All right, so I am. Um, 
All right, so I should have a new screen open. Let me see if this thing works the way I want it to. So it's 100 times two. I'm not using my writing tablet here. That um, I don't have that right now. Right, right, no. But that's what the purpose of is to explain to her. Um, minus, what was it again? 16 times two squares? 16 times two square. 100 times two is 200. 16 times two squares is four. But we have to work this section first. So 16 times four, six four is 24, carry two, six, four one is four and two six, so that's 64. Since so we didn't know be 200 minus 64 and that's 136. Any clearer? Abby? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Sorry, say it again, dearest. Oh, I'm saying yes. Okay, good. Is there anybody in the class that um, still not understanding what it is? Okay, so everybody's good so far. All right, so let me go back. To my, oh, but I could do that, but anyway, I don't have to. Um, Are you seeing my screen? No, sir. No, sir, no screen. I'm going to see now go work, you know. Them, no, there's something I just show. It's not giving me the option to share the whole screen, the entire screen. So let me just go ahead and just share the window and see if that makes a difference. All right, tell me if you're seeing. Oh Lord, I may have to. Yes, sir, I see your screen now. Oh, and you also hear me. All right, so good. So I didn't have to unmute right there. Good. All right, so. I see the entire screen. All right, great. All right, so that's all got the 136. So the solution can be expressed in the ordered pair 2, 136. Hmm. Hmm. 2, 136, sir? Yes. Remember the first one in the ordered pair is my domain. Anybody remember that? Yes, sir. And my domain is my independent variable. And the second one in the ordered pair is called my range. 
and my range is the dependent variable. So whatever I put into it is going to be x. Whatever I get out from it is going to be the y. So you remember we're putting the two? Talk truth. Yes, sir. And you will get what the 136 don't. So that's why the other pair is 2, 136. Now, hear me out. 2 cannot be paired with any other number but 136. Because if 2 go to 135, it is not an ordered pair. A set of ordered pairs is called a relation. It will not be a relation. There is a misfit. I'm going to be a woman beater. She's going to be a cheater. I'm going to have other baby mother. Then mm -mm. I'm going to fight. One of the teeth from the other. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not healthy. But when you have an ordered pair, wanna live like one unit. Even if you have a little argument, wanna still talk it over. Everything Chris and Curry, wanna have one spoon of rice, one eat two, two grain, and the other eat the other two grain. Yeah, man, that's ordered. So same thing with the mathematics. Same thing with the mathematics. Same thing with the mathematics. So the solution is going to be expressed as an ordered pair of 2, 136. Everybody understand that 2, 136? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. May I hear one voice that answer me, you know? And God forbid, yes. is the same thing, I got, a same fate I'm going to meet me at the end of the semester. God forbid. But anyhow, let's go. Um, let me ask you, are there any questions? I want to look at this. You don't have access to this just yet, but before the day is out, I'll, I'll give you access. Um, look at this. Um, for another couple of minutes, because I'm going to give you an example to do on your own. Look at it. I'm going to give you an example to do on your own. All right. All right. I can, I can, I can, I can move. Sir. Yes, please. Good morning. Good morning, checking. Sir, there I'm at. I get a still, me a medzi, but I still not see all the two of the domains, sir. Okay, Naomi, sure. All right, Jaheem, so you're not, you're not seeing why the two is the domain? No, the sir. First, the, first, the first number in the ordered pair is known as the what? The domain. All right, so that's why the two are the domain. So the first one in the other pair or the domain? What is the, the second one called? The range. Yeah, every single time. So once you have an ordered pair written, the first term is called the domain every single time. And the other one is called the range. Now, let me tell you how I remembered it when I was going to little school. D comes before R. A, B, C, D. Q, R. So that means the D, the domain, comes before the range in the parentheses. All right? But guess what now? 
The domain is also known as the independent variable. The range depends on the domain. The range depends on the domain. The amount of money I have depends on no, 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 no. where I can go. The amount of money I have depends on where I can go. I can drive to Montego Bay because I'll have money to buy gas. Um, if I'm in Montego Bay and I'm too tired, I can check into an Airbnb or better yet, I can check into one of the hotels down there because I have money. If we only go with gas money and all money, I don't go to Montego Bay and look I wish we could have stopped up at KFC and buy a food and then have a drive come back up. So the domain tells you what range, how far I can go. So that's why the domain, also known as the so, excuse me, sorry. I know I um I wanted to know your sharing screen. Not seeing it? No, I'm not seeing it. Anybody has seen the share screen? Yes, sir. I'm seeing it. Okay. All right, that means I'm my okay. I've seen it now. Okay. So where was I? So um so oh yeah. So why am I speaking about this independent versus dependent variable? Because this foundation concept that I'm actually trying to build on now is the plotting of graphs. So that's what I'm trying to build on now. And many students, many, many students don't know how to plot graph. Graphs are so important. When Zenika um, mapping the sales of our products and our supervisor says, we need to map the sales. And she said, well, you know, so this product sells more. When Chantel um, is mapping the sales of a particular drug, she will have to use a graph. When Romara is mapping occupancy level in his five-star hotel, you have to put a graph. Let us talk about that one. Are all of them two fall into this category? The higher the graph depends on what? Let me see if you guys think it. Higher the graph depends on what? The higher the graph in, 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 in Roman Mario's hotel that he manages Sir? depends on what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We are focused on the class and job work. <laughs> what? Mm -mm. You reach your work now? Yes, sir. All right, never mind, never mind. <laughs> you know, that, that the word is not pulpit at the door here. But never mind. All right, come in. We can't, we can't catch you at the same time. So, so, so hear me out now. So what I'm saying to you is, Look at me. Romario, hello. Romario works at a hotel. Romario works at a ho hotel. Romario's plotting a graph. Romario graph, high up, high up, high up, high up, man. In graph, big. What can we say about Romario's hotel? Talk to me now. I feel like I want to go back to sleep. Sir, that the graph is depending. The grass is one cut, sir. The grass is one cut. Now I want to say that. <laughs> cut them. 
That I'm getting good sales. That's I type. Yes, I mean your up and sales have gone up. Yeah, man. So when Chantal um get enough money in the cash register, what it means? Okay, all right. I don't think you guys are with me now. Uh, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Um, I'm going to give you five minutes to, to walk it out, to clear your headspace, because what I'm doing now, I'm not going to come back to it. And you guys are, are not here. Take five minutes. I'll come back to you. Five minutes. All right, let's go. So what I'm saying, what I was trying to say to you is, when when Romara plots the graph and the graph is 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 is, is really large and is showing a lot of things, you know, it means that the sales, the occupancy level has increased. When 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 Chantal has a lot of cash in the cash register, it means that. A lot of sales went in. When Zenika gets a lot of commission, because for example, she's commission paid, when she gets a lot of overtime payment, it means that she would have clocked quite a bit of sales. So the point I'm trying to make is one is a dependent variable, one is an independent variable. The independent variable tells me if I put in 20 hours, I am going to get out $30,000. But if I put in 10 hours, I'm only going to get about $15,000, right? So one is an independent variable. The amount of time I'm putting into overtime is going to be dependent on the amount of money that I get as pay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. On the dead, sir? No, sir. Let's go. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, all right, do that for me, please. Are you seeing the screen still? Yes, sir. All right, do that for me, please.
Ajna Barnish. So to be finished by What did you get for the answer? What is your order here? What is your order prayer class? Uh, 50 and 160. It's right on the screen. It is right on the screen. It's on the screen. It shows me that you guys are not paying or it is that you're not understanding. It's right there. I projected the answer on the screen. It's right there. It did it. Right. Right this up. Right. It says consider the assignment. The assigning each numerical age, the number of persons living in a town who are that age. But age and Numbers. The order pair 61, 51, 60 would rent. Sir, yeah, we are close there. And the total 160 citizens.
Sir, I can't hear you. I'm breaking up, so I'm trying to sort of my internet. Hold on. All right, I should, be, I should be much clearer now. Am I clearer? Yes, sir. All right, good. So what that is saying to us is that there are 50, there are 160 um, citizens, 160 citizens that have, that are age 50. There are 160, 150 citizens, 160 citizens that are 150 years of age. All right. Now, it says a set of all such ordered pair expresses the relationship between age and population. So that ordered pair is representing age and population. Age is 50. What population of the community is 50? will be 160, will be 160. And that's it for this slide. Tell me if you have any questions, tell me if you understand what it is that I'm trying to get at. Uh, sir? Yes, go ahead, please. Is this the part where you said um for the the first example you put the domain mm -hmm. and you put the comma beside the solution or the what we got the the answer is so is something like this? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, oh. so, so 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 tell me the domain for this one now. This example, the domain is what? Fifty. Fifty. Yeah, man. And the range is? 160. 160. Yes, man. Domain is 50 and the range is 160. All right. You know what I want to do? I want, I want each of you. If this is the only concept I do in class today, I was about to move on. And I said, no, I'm not moving on yet. I want each of you. And this is, this is classwork. I'm giving you... I'm giving you five minutes each. Five minutes each. Let me see how many of you are here. I'm giving you five. Okay. A little bit of one. 12 of one. 11 of one. And now you may can't talk now. So, and, um, and two others can't talk. So it's all right. Sir, me can't talk. I'm still having them ears. But me can't right. work it out. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, no problem. So I'm going to give you five minutes each. And I want you guys to... 
to come up with your own ordered peer and you're going to define what your ordered peer is. So for example, um, you have a situation like that, considering assigning to each numerical age, the number of persons living in a town who are, who are, who are that age. Um, the age of the person, um, of course, would be a whole number. The order period 50, 160 is representing 50 years and a total of 160 citizens of the town who are 50 years old. So you will say to me you now that the set of ordered pair 50, 160 expresses a relationship between age and population. I want each of you, I know, oh goodness, help me now. Um, that C person, that C person, I soon tell you, that C person. Carla, Carla says she's doing um, social work. So I want Carla to find a social work example for me. Colin, we're going to find a business example for me. Dexter, we're going to find a business example. Romara, we're going to find a tourism example and so forth and so on. All right? I want you to find examples within your skill area about an ordered pair, and we're going to have a conversation about this in class. Am I clear on what it is that I want you to do for me? Yes, sir. All right. On the mark, get set, go. Start. Five minutes.
I hear somebody trying to come in. Are you finished? Anybody finished want to go? Sorry? Who is finished? Um, I like the okay, go, go ahead. And the rest of you, you're, you are going to listen to what Abby is saying. And then we're going to critique whether or not she's right or wrong. Okay, Abby, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, okay. So using the example, um, you know, the assignment. Um, so I'm in the, the nursing field, geriatrics. So mm -hmm. I did mine like that. So um, there are 20 patients and each patient, each patient need two nurses for assistance, it's like to assist, to assist them. So, so that would be 40, 40 nurses um, in all. So it would be like, depending on how many patients there is 20, um, it would um, result in how much um, assistance there will be. So it would be, it would be 20 comma 40, so the, the domain will be 20 and um, the range will be 40. So, is, she, is she correct? Based on what she, based on her example or, or, or reasoning, is she correct? All right. Um, this thing now work out in another first day. Now work out. Anyway, Abby, let me and you have a conversation since you spoke to me and I listened to you. So yes, you'll be correct because what you what I heard you say is that there are twenty patients and each each patient will need um two, two nurses. Yes, to assist them. Right, to assist them. So the domain is going to be twenty and the range mm -hmm. is going to be forty, 40. because. Each patient is going to need two, so it's going to be 20, 40, right? Very good. All right. Is there anybody else? Give me a minute. Okay. Um, sure. can I try? Oh, go, right, go right ahead for me, please. All right, so mine is considering assigning a numeric age, the number of the bartenders in a hotel who are of that age, both the age and number of the cocktails are whole numbers. And then the question will continue by saying that the ordered, the ordered pair 25 to 100 would represent the age 25 year old 25 years and the total of the total of 100 cocktails of creation by a 25 year old bartender okay um all right so um i hear you so what you're saying then is that so the 25 year so the domain is the domain is what what is your domain 25. So 25. And that 25 represent who know the the age of the bartender? Bartender, yes. And then now, okay, so I do have a problem with that. And then now your range. Explain your range to me again. 
Um, the one hundred would be the cocktails that the twenty-five year old bartender would have knowledge on making. All right. So how many? How many? All right. So. How many bar how many bartenders at age 25 you have? More than one or just one? More than one. Okay, okay, all right, got you, got you. All right, good. Next. Okay, sir. So um mine says for each pair of students, there is a total number of desktops in a computer lab. Mm -hmm. Both the number of desktops and students are whole numbers. Mm -hmm. The ordered pair 15 to 30 would represent the 15 students and the total number of 30 desktops is to be occupied by the 15 pair of students. Okay. Fair enough. So your ordered pair would be 15 comma 30? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Remember, if you don't participate, this is a problem. You know? I'm asking you this question, these questions because I really want you to be able to understand what it is that you're doing. I don't want you to be able to just, you know, come to class, sit and not, and not get what it is being taught or being said or being done. So I'm going to go again. Um, I've heard from Abby, Dexter, and and Romario, what about the others? Jaheem, Jashan. Okay. And I'll go for it this morning. You know. Negative. And I'll go for it at all this morning. Um. Hold on, foundation concept two. Uh, I need to go to foundation concept two. Sorry. All right, my system is taking time to. I right, call this up now. Foundation concept two. Mm, come on, system. Okay, page isn't responding. Give me a minute, please. I want to move on, but the page not responding. All right, hold on, see some movements. Um, but of buff. Um, and that's a problem because I'm not using that thing. It makes sharing a little difficult. All right, let me look, let me look at the window and see if this one will work a little better for me. Uh, Sir. Um, yes, Poppy. Sir, may I have, may I have mine ready? Yes, who? Oh, you have yours ready? All right, go ahead, quickly, yes, please. Yes. Right, so, may I have on a football field of 100 players, 30 of them are black. The ordered pair would be 30, 30, and 100. 30 would be the domain as it details how much of the players are black and the range would be 100 as it represents the total number of players on the field. Okay. All right. 
Um, Uh, all right, so the domain part I do have a problem with. The range part is where I have a problem because based on how you're worded, it more sounds like a ratio as opposed to the ordered pair. Um, all right, hold on to that. Hold on to that. I'm, going, I, I, I'm coming back to you, Tashawn, because I'm going to tell you, show you where it is that I'm coming from. Um, just hold on one minute. Are you seeing my new screen, my new share? Or are you yes. sharing the graph? Yes. Yes. All right. Watch me now. And Joshon, I want you to, well, I want all of you to look at it, but I'm going to come back to you in particular, Joshon, um, with it. Um, because remember, we're speaking about ordered pair. So my question to you is your 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 scenario is correct, but is it an, is it an ordered pair? And we're going to find out. So it says to graph the relation defined by y equals 4x minus 1. y equals 4x minus 1. As a matter of fact, not just Joshua, you know, it's all of those, all of you who answered me. Um, sir? I am going to go ahead. Somebody said, sir. Sir, um, it wasn't Joshua who was speaking. It was Jaheem. Oh, it was Jaheem. Oh, sorry. So Jaheem, you can't tell me, say, how did you? Jaheem. No, sir, I'm never one cut you, sir. I'm just no, man, you explain no, it. No, man, me. cut me, man, and tell me, son, I'm me, I talk to you, sir. Cut me, man. All right, Jaheem, sorry about that. All right, sir. Yeah, so, thanks, please, for bringing it to my attention. All right, so, um, so each of you, so Jaheem, I hear you, and I want each of you, when I do this now, you can go back to your, your scenario and see if it works and see if it works. It says, draw the graph of the relation defined by y equals 4x minus 1. Wow. In order for me to do this graph, this graph is going to be linear. Sir, what do you mean by linear? It's going to be a straight line graph. Sir, how you know? Because My domain is raised to the first power. You see that 4x is just 4x. It's not 4x squared or 4x cubed or the root of 4x is just 4x by itself. So I know I have a linear function. My function is linear. And the linearity expresses the relationship between the two variables. So um, Jaheem spoke about football field and players, mm -mm. footballers, uh, uh, black versus total number of footballers. Um, somebody spoke about age 25 bartenders and the number of cocktails that they made. Um, Carla spoke about, mm -mm. Abby spoke about um, the number of patients. Um, requiring two nurses each. And some of us talk about something else that I don't remember, but yeah. We need sets of ordered pairs in order to, in order to justify our answer right here. So this y equals 4x minus 1. There are several ways I can do this graph several ways I can do this graph. We are going to select random values of X. We are going to be selecting random values of X. So somebody give me a random value of X. Don't give me no weird one, like 1 million, you know. Just give me a random value of X. Um, like mm -hmm. two, all right, I hear two. All right, work with me. I want you to substitute two into the function and tell me what it is that two is going to be the domain. I want you to substitute two into the function, into the equation, and tell me what the range is. Seven. Seven? Yes, sir. All right, because two times four is eight, and eight minus one is seven. All agreed? 
Agreed, sir. Good. So what is the ordered pair now? Sir, 2,7. Very good. 2,7. All right. Watch me. 2,7. This is 1,0, 2,0. So this the two. The first one is my x value, which is my domain. Now you know that. So I'm, it's, I'm going to go all the way up to 2,7 because we just work out something and we know that 2,7 fits on it. So I'm going to put it and click it right there. All right. I want someone else to give me another value. Preferably, uh, I, I'm going to ask for a value that is negative, a domain value that is negative. Negative four. Negative four. Wow, negative four gonna be too much. Negative four gonna jump off my graph. Can I find a negative? negative? Two. Negative two. All right. What's the what's the range? If negative two is the domain, what's the range? Sure, negative nine. Excellent. Give me now the ordered pair. Negative two comma negative nine. Very nice. Negative two comma Rockstone. Negative nine. Negative nine. Jump off. Do you know? It's why negative nine jump off because this is negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine jump off. All right. Go to negative one. Negative one. What's the range when, when the domain is negative one? That's going to be negative five. Negative five, all right. So that can fall on the graph. Right here? Is it there? Negative one comma negative five? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. So it is important for us to find the ordered pair. The ordered pair, so one is a dependent variable. And the other one is an independent variable. My independent variable is going to be my x value, my domain, right? So in one case, it is positive two. And then I work it out again, get seven. In another case, it is negative one. And I work it out again, get negative five. Give me another domain for x. Anybody, somebody. Six. Six, maybe too much. Three. Three. Okay, let us try three. Oh, three, maybe too much also. All right, because I mean, based on my graph, I have to be in the contents. What about zero? If it is zero, what is going to be? Sorry, negative one. Negative one, if it is zero. You sure? If the domain is zero, it's going to be negative one. So give me a minute. <laughs> uh, why are you making a teacher? Um, trouble with next time. Sorry, I know you're a joker. Yeah, <laughs> no, but you see, you're supposed to tell me, yes, sir. I am serious. So if the domain is zero, it's going to be negative one. So zero comma negative one. Is that is that is that correct right there? Is that zero comma negative one common right? No, sir. No, that is negative one zero. No, but it's but I said zero negative one. No, sir. In that one, it's negative neg one. You have to have zero first, not negative one first. Okay, so it's right here, so. No, no sir. Right here, so. Yes, sir. That is it. Okay. And when I click it, it says move the mouse over the point on the grid. When the cursor changes to a hand, click to point a plot. <laughs> to plot a point. Click to plot a point. Plot three points in increasing or decreasing order to draw the graph. So I had to do three of them in order for my graph to be plotted. Now I have done it. I've plotted three things, three points. I don't know if I'm right. So I'm going to click done. And it tells me that I'm correct. It tells me that I'm correct. And then somebody's going to say, then, sir. 
What it mean about it choose zero and two and negative one? Would I get the same answer? Absolutely. Because on that line, on that graph, it shows you all the points that could possibly fit, fit on that graph paper. So it works. So here's what I want you to do for me. To make sure that you understand what you did. I want each of you to find five sets of ordered pair for the equation y equals 3x minus 1. And I'm using the jargon because I want you to be able to speak the jargon. I want each of you to find five sets of ordered pair. I don't care if they're going to repeat, but I want each of you to find five sets because I want you to get your practice. I've given you three minutes to find the five of them. Starting now. Two more minutes. One more minute.
All right, so let's let's go back to. All right. I need to hear from. Okay, so I need somebody to give me a first coordinate. Any person. So two comma seven. Two comma seven. Two comma seven. Is right here, don't? Yes, sure. All right, I need somebody else to give me another point. Two comma five. Two comma five. Okay, I need another point. Minus two comma seven. Minus two comma seven. All right, is that correct? Sorry, let me not ask that question. Bam, it says incorrect. I know which one is incorrect. What I want you to do for me now is to look at the points that I have, go back to the equation and see which of them is incorrect and let me know. I know, already know which is incorrect. Look at it and tell me which of them is incorrect. I have 2 comma 7, 2 comma 5, and negative 2 comma uh, 7. No, sir, sorry about that. It should be minus 2 comma minus 7. Okay, so which one is incorrect? You're saying this 2 comma 7 is incorrect? No, sir. The one mm -hmm. on the minus 2, minus two comma 7. The minus two comma seven is incorrect? Yes, sir. Okay. Everybody agrees with that? Yes, sir. It should be minus two minus seven, comma minus seven. So it's supposed to be minus two comma minus seven? Yes, That's sir. What okay, yes, all right, good. So let me reset it. So you say it's supposed to be minus two comma minus seven. And then the two comma the two comma five is supposed to be correct, and then the two comma seven I got there. Is that correct? No, sir. Okay, so something else is still wrong. Look at it and tell me which of them is incorrect. Sir, the two comma seven. How how why you guess two comma seven is incorrect? Because. Talk to me now. Why, 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 are, why are you saying 2 comma 7 is incorrect? Because it's, tell me how it is that you figure it out. Mm? So I don't know how I figure it out. It just look wrong. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We're going to work it out. Sir? Uh huh. Because it's um, three, three times two minus one. Would have given five. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because three times two is six. And six minus one is five and not seven. So two comma seven is incorrect. Because when the domain is two, two times three is six. And six minus one is five, not seven. So that would be the incorrect value. Can everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right. So 2,7 is not. So 2,5 is the correct value, which is down here. So let me reset it now and put him at my negative 2, comma negative 7. And I'm going to put him at my 2,5. I need another value. Somebody give me another value so I can complete my graph. So 0, comma negative 1. 0, comma negative 1. And that is now correct. So all those three values are correct. Do you follow what I just did a while ago, class? Jesus, help me, Lord. I yes, don't sir. Mm -mm. I'm not going to go through the semester with this. I promise you, I'm going to pass on this class to somebody else. I'm not going to want to sit down and talk to Uno. And Uno not answer me. No deal. 
I will sit in my bed and I'll talk to myself. All right, let's go. Did anyone else have any other value other than the negative two comma negative seven, the zero comma negative one and the two comma five? If so, may I have those values, please? Four. You get negative. Say it again. You have negative one and negative what? Four. Negative one and negative four. All right. Um, anybody else? Any other value? I have three comma negative one. Three comma negative one. You sure about that one, Romario? Oh, sorry, it's zero, um, negative one, yeah. Zero comma negative one, all right. We got that value before. Um, any, any, other, any other value that we got? Can the graph go up to eight, sir? The graph can go up to four, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, can go up to eight. Three comma eight. Three comma, three comma eight. All right. Anybody else? Any other value other than the ones that we got so far? One so we have two. one comma. Two. One comma two. So you see what happened? Let me tell you what I just did. So I got three values at first and plotted those three values. And then I went back to the question and I asked for three different values. Romara gave me one of the values that we used before, zero comma one, zero comma negative one. And I never used that this time because I wanted three different values. And you see, I plot the graph and the graph is still correct. Now, let me go back and show you something now. So one of the first graph that we plotted, Romario gave me zero comma negative one a while ago. Look here, it's a zero comma negative one here, so boom. It sits on the line. Look at two comma five. It sits on the line. Let us look at negative two comma negative something, negative seven, see there? It sits on the line. So all those values sit on the line. So what's the point I'm making? It doesn't matter what sets of values you use, as long as your graph is scaled. Then somebody asked a while ago, sir, can the graph go up to eight? And I checked and I said, yes. As long as your graph is scaled appropriately, you can use any value you so desire. Any value you so desire. Once it is, that your graph is scaled appropriately, that the scale of the graph can work on a certain, you're good to go. I promise you. All right, I'm going to give you another example, another version. Again, I want you to find five, you know, I shouldn't ask for five, you know, I should ask for six because I want two different plots. I want six different sets of ordered pair, six different sets of ordered pair. Look at the graph, because at this point in time, now I want you to look at the graph to make sure that whatsoever value you're using can be, can be plotted. So look at the range of the x-axis. Look at the range, or look at how high the y value, the x-axis go. Look at the domain of the x-axis and look at the range of the y-axis. And do your calculations accordingly. I'm giving you five more minutes. Very good, incidentally. Very nice. For those of you who don't catch on yet, like, try to catch on to this one.
All right, I need three. I need three first. Any three, quick and fast. One comma negative five. Negative one comma negative five. I, want, oh, see, I want to look to see how I'm doing the stop. Negative one comma negative five, next. Four comma five. Four comma five. You notice I'll go to the X axis first because the ordered pair is written as domain comma range. So I'll look for my X first and then I'll go to the Y after. Next. Two comma one. Two, then one. Correct. I need three different values. Who is going to give me the first one of the three different values? Negative two comma negative seven. Negative two comma negative seven. Next. Three comma three. Three comma three. Next. Four comma five. Bueno, very good. Anybody feeling a little comfortable with this now? Yes, sir. Yes, man. So you know what the domain is. You know what the range is. You know what the independent variable is. The independent variable is going to be the value that you substitute, which is the X value. And then the dependent variable is going to be the value that you, the value that comes out of the equation, which is your Y value. So you learned four terms today. Domain, range, independent, dependent. Now, I have a bag with four words in there. Domain, range, independent, dependent. And I'm shaking this bag and I picked out range. Give me a word from that bag that is similar to range. Dependent value. Dependent, very good. And my bag that has domain, what is common to domain? Independent variable. Independent, very good. So I have my range, my domain, I have my dependent and my independent. So those are four terms that you need to know. Then we speak of an ordered pair. So the ordered pair must be written in the form domain comma range. Can't be written anywhere else, anything else. It must be written domain comma range. And normally we write it X comma Y. And if you look at it, when you say ABCs, your alphabets, X comes before Y, talk truth. Yes. Yeah, man. So when you're, do, when you're plotting on the graph, we have to look for X values first, followed by our Y value. All right. I love it. Um, I want to find... Okay, this one looks... All right. Again, this is going to be the last one, and then we'll move into something else. So let's go. Um, six values again. Six values again, six values again. On the mark, get set, go. Sir? Yes, calling it? Calling it? You, you called? I'm seeing two students that have joined the class and then I don't even say good morning. Only no manners, you know. Miss two students come on to my class and my class started from eight o'clock and then they joined the class. Okay, fine. I was speaking and you didn't want to um, interrupt me. But when I stop speaking, somebody said good morning. No, somebody knows that additional students come to the class. So I'm waiting for the good morning, please. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Good morning, Mr. Marlo Antonio. And I'm waiting for the other good morning from the other student. Morning, sir. Yeah, man. You know, you know, come in the eye class and just drop in and, 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 and acknowledge the eye. All right. Start for me, please.
commit to this. I don't think so. Unplug the computer, please. Let me don't. Unplug the computer. Don't don't need to plug it. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. Can you try that? Can you try that? Um, try to carry that chair in the room, please. My name is Dr. Chair from the room. I don't think I can commit myself to this at all. All right. Um, may I have now the the three different values, please? Zero, zero comma negative three. Zero comma negative three. Yes. All right. Um, somebody else. Next value. Zero not seeing your screen. Say it again. Sir, I said I'm not seeing your screen. Anybody seen the screen? Yes, sir. I'm seeing it now, sir. I'm seeing it now, sir. Okay. Um, one comma one. Another body, please. So negative one comma negative seven. 
negative one comma negative seven. All right, hold on. Very good. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I need, I need three more. Sir, two comma five. Meeting is being recorded. Don't hold me. For sure. All right. Um, are you hearing me now again, guys? Sorry about that. I got disconnected. Yes, sir. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So you're saying somebody else, I heard somebody said two comma five. Sir, I'm not seeing your screen. All right, I'm going to share again. I got disconnected, so it went. Proceed now. Yes, sir. You said somebody said 2,5. Then what next? I need two other numbers, two other ordered pairs. Hello, somebody? Minus one, minus seven. Minus one, comma, negative. No, we got that one before. We got that one before. Say it again? Sir, um, is not a ordered pair I'm giving you. I'm saying something. I don't know if I'm only one, but I only got four ordered pairs. You only got four ordered pairs? No, you can get, trust me, the ordered pairs are limitless. The only condition to this one here is that we need to fix it on our, to make sure that it fits on our sub. So anybody gave me zero, zero comma negative three? I got that value before? I doubt it. So what about zero comma negative three? When X well, I said it before. Yes, so I have that one. Before? Okay, anybody said one comma negative one? No, sir. Yeah, but one comma negative one supposed to be one. Check it. When x is one, four times one is four. What is four minus three? One. Says so one, sorry, not negative one, but one comma one. Anybody had said one comma one before? Yes, sir. All right, let us try three though. Three comma four, three is 12. 12 comma, that's three comma nine. Do we have nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so three comma nine won't fit on the graph. Um, negative two. Negative four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, All right. Eight, it won't fit. Yeah, that won't fit. That won't fit on the graph. Okay, fair enough. But just remember though, you have um an infinite number of of ordered pairs, and and we're gonna get to a point where it is that I will limit you to the number of ordered pairs. So I will say to you, plot the graph of whatever, whatever, whatever for the domain x is greater than or equals to negative three, but less than or equals to one. So it means that I am limiting you to the domain, right? But when I don't limit the domain, it means that I have an infinitely number of, of, of ordered pairs. All right, I'm gonna give you an example, but this example is not here. I'm gonna use a different thing to, to, to plot it. Um, and I'm jumping from the, 
from the from the linear graph to a graph that is going to be quadratic. I'm going to auto write this down for me, please. Y is equal, write for me, Y is equal to X squared plus seven X plus 12. Y equals X squared plus seven X plus 12. y equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, listen to my instruction. My instruction is, whenever you're given a, a quadratic graph to plot, quadratic, 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 the, the variable is raised to the second power. The variable is raised to the second power. So x squared is gonna be a quadratic function. I want you to use at least two negative values. You must use zero and at least two positive values. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to calculate the ordered pair for me for negative one, negative two, negative three. I want you to do it for zero. I also want you to do it for one, two, and three. So what I'm asking you to do for me is to find the ordered pair of the function y is equal to x squared plus 7x plus 12. And I want three values to the left of 0 and three values to the right of 0, including 0. Same thing we have been doing for the last hour. I am now dropping it. And then I'm going to ask you to, to tell me your ordered pair. And then I'm going to project it on a graph. And then you're going to keep those values. And then at some point in time, during the course of today or next week or, or the course of next week, you're going to actually put that on a graph paper. All right, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to have that done up for me, please. Thanks.
Is anybody finished? No, sir. All right, cool. Continue working, please. I don't want anybody to sit in the class and not work, you know. I want you to be working, all of you. This is the only way you're going to be understanding. Make the mistakes now so that I can correct them. Please don't sit and do not do anything in class. Participate in the activities. Please, I ask of you. Anyone finish? Sir? Um, finish? No, sir. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. I like it. Wait. Um, before you were asking us to find to find relation for um the answer on on the screen here so the top um but i was having trouble finding my relation like calculating them out and i think we misunderstand something um, making my request, can you please, like, before, like, show how to do this one on the screen here, so, like, write it out. I just feel like, um... So, I, 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 want, I, want, I want me able to write it at this point in time, but mm -hmm. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. You can write it, but listen to what okay. I'm saying to you. So, if you're looking at, and the rest of you, um, you can ignore us if you understood what was happening, you can ignore us. If not, you can pause what you're doing and just listening to the conversation. Y equals 4x plus 3 minus 3 is my equation. I want yes. to find six sets of ordered pairs for argument's sake. What I'm going to be doing is to be looking at random values of my domain. What is my domain again? What is my domain? Four X. Good. 
So my domain will be my X values. So I'm looking for random values. So I'm going to select randomly zero. And then for that random zero value, I'm going to substitute that domain value zero into my function. Anywhere in the function, I see X, I put zero. What is four times zero? Zero. Good. And what is zero minus three? Negative three. There you go. So my Y value is going to be negative three. So therefore, my ordered pair is going to be zero comma negative three. Zero comma negative three. The zero is representing my domain value and the negative three is rep representing my range value. So zero comma negative three is my ordered pair for this function. You know, as I speak, I can think of a multiple choice question where they give you a function like this and give you four different sets of ordered pairs, A, B, C, D. And I can say, which of the following is not ordered pairs of the function? And you would have to go and sit and substitute values and make sure that you get an ordered pair. Because if I say to you, zero comma negative two, is zero comma negative two an ordered pair of this function on the screen? No, sir. Why not? Tell me why not. You are correct, but tell me why. Hmm? Talk to me now. You said no, Dexton. Tell me why. Yeah, because um. Zero would have been the domain name that says zero minus three would have been zero comma negative three. Very good, because when you substitute zero into the function, your resulting value is going to be negative three and not negative two. So zero comma negative two is not an ordered pair of the function. Follow what I'm saying? Abby, do you understand what I'm talking about now? Yes, sir. All right. So the function I gave you just now was y equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. y equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. Can you go ahead for me, please? I need seven sets of ordered pairs. Zero, one, two, three. Negative one, negative two, and negative three. I'm finished, sir. Thanks, Carlo. Um, anybody else? Sorry for the seven X thing that you gave us. Say it again, next time. I'm asking um for the X squared plus seven X plus twelve. Yeah, all I'm going to be doing and then we're in class, you know, is just for you to, and I want to make sure that your ordered pairs are correct. Then I want to show you how to put it on a graph paper. And then, no, I know I didn't ask you to take graph papers to class. I know not everybody will have a graph paper. And then you are going to be doing some graph paper work. I got a message from Erica just now. Um, the representative is asking me to wait until tomorrow to get access. So I won't be able to give you access for today. But as soon as I get access tomorrow, I will be putting you guys onto the platform.
so you can start working on your first set of assessments, which would be putting some graphs. I will, I will, I will communicate with you. Um, please use the link. I'm seeing Marlo saying that he's unable to to get on, but please, as best as possible, use the link to get on to um, the WhatsApp group because I've been communicating with you primarily using the WhatsApp. I want you to look at the screen for me. I'm sharing a new screen. And I want you to look at the screen for me. Um, and we are going to be looking to see if you can locate those points on the graph for me. I give you two seconds to do that. Look at the screen to see the stuff coming to you. Oh no, I can't. Um, oh, I'm not sharing. It's supposed to be Desmos. All right. It's All right, you're supposed to be seeing the screen now. Are you seeing the graph? Yes, sir. All right, look to see if all your points that you have calculated, you can locate it on the graph. And then I'm going to give you another five minutes to do the stuff, and then we'll, 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 we'll end the class for today, a little early today, all right? Can't see on the point, sir.
Monique, you're saying something? Monique? All right. Are you all hearing me now? Sir, I got disconnected from the class. I just joined my phone. Oh, okay. So I just saw you up top. That's why. 
Uh, no problem. All right. So in another five minutes, this is what I want you to do for me. In another five minutes, this is what I want you to do for me. I want one person to give me a point on the graph. One, somebody give me an ordered pair. We have seven ordered pairs. I want somebody to give me the first ordered pair that I ask you to do for me. Carlo, you said that you're finished. Give me an ordered pair, please. Minus one comma six. Minus one comma six. Minus one comma six. Is it minus one comma six? I don't think so. Minus one comma. Somebody help her out. Hello. Sir, is it, sir, I got negative one comma six as well. No, it has to be negative one comma negative six. See there, negative one comma negative six. That sits exactly on the on the graph. Negative one comma negative six. It can't be negative one comma positive six. Negative one comma positive six does not sit on the graph. Make sense? Check it again. Negative one square is positive one because it's negative one times negative one, and seven times negative one is negative seven. So you're going to have one minus seven is negative six and negative six plus 12 is, I said, I said positive, hold on, hold on. I may have put in the wrong function. Let me, before I start, let me, oh, guess what? Look at what is happening. Can you see the, can you see my graph? Can you see the screen, the full screen? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I, I'm going to apologize because you see where the 12 is? Yes, sir. We're seeing the screen. Yes, sir. Right. It is, it is, I don't know. It drummed to the other side. It should not be there. So let me clear that and put it over here. So yes, you are correct now. Um, you saw what had happened to me? My 12 was in the second line, the second graph instead of the first graph. So yes, who was that? Carlo, you are correct. It's going to be negative one comma six. You are correct right here. I had a wrong graph projected on just now. So I apologize. So that's correct. So if we're speaking, we can't hear you. All right, do me a favor. Just look at the just look at the graph for me, please. And when you look at the graph, tell me whether or not you can identify the other values on the on the graph, people. Oops, sorry, that's a wrong graph. Can you see the Can you see the graph projected? Yes, sir. All right. So look to see if. The, your other values can be sit, um, seated perfectly on the graph. Take two minutes and do that for me, please. All of you, the rest of the points.
So are you able to scroll so we can see the other ends of the, both ends of the x-axis? Oh, sorry, sir. I should have said the, um, the y axis. Can you are able to scroll up? Right? So much of it. That's the top, sir. Yes, it is. Oh. My largest one will um, go all the way up to um, 42, that's why I was asking. All right, come. Two more minutes and end it up. 
what is it that you have? Um, you are asking about the the top of the graph. So you see how what it is that I've done. I've gone all the way here because the graph, you remember I said to you that you have unlimited domain on the graph. So I can go all the way up on the graph or I can come all the way down. So there are other areas of the graph, you know, we're talking about the maximum and the minimum and the turning point, we don't reach there yet. But did anybody get when X equals zero? Aha, maybe you wouldn't have gotten that. When X equals zero, um, Y is equals, sorry, when X is equals to, negative three, that y is equal to zero. And what got the domain x equals negative three and y equals zero? Yes, sir. Good job. And what got the domain when x equals negative four, the range to be equal to zero also? No, so you asked us to between um, negative one and positive three, those were Yes, yes, yes. I did say that. I did say that. You're correct. I did say negative one, negative two, negative three, right? But if you look at my graph, you will see that negative four is also a value that is going to be equal to zero. And the last thing I'm going to say to you with this, because I don't want to give you an overload on the graphs, because I can't do graphs in one class. And I think I've done enough with you for you to have some stuff to work with. You see, because negative four right here cuts the x-axis, so does negative three, it means that there is a turning point. I'm not going to tell you anything more about turning point because that is going to be the basis of our class next week, God's willing. There's going to be a turning point. So this negative three going around to the negative four, it's going to be a turning point. What I'm going to do for you, I'm going to end class, but I'm going to screenshot this for you and I'm going to send it in a WhatsApp group so you can compare your domain to the graph that I have here projected, and then look at it, review it. Come next week, we're going to talk about the turning point. We're going to talk about different parts of the graph. Is the graph symmetric? What is the axis of symmetry, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to look at the graph in its entirety. All right. So um, I'm just going to end right here. There's nothing more that I want to do with you because I don't want to give you an overload. As I said before, I can't do graphs in one sitting. All right. So make sure that you get connected. Marlo, I hope you got connected now to the WhatsApp group. Did you? No, sir. I haven't seen any notifications on that as yet. All right. Um, all right. Um, you are in. All right, I will touch basically tomorrow. I know how to reach you indirectly. All right, guys, thanks for coming out. We'll talk next next Saturday, God's willing. Yes, Thank sir. you, sir. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening.